Hi, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Hi, I'm Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Brad, do you want to talk about what we're going to do today or do you want to cut away? <laughs> no, let's talk about it. We got the Valsalva maneuver here. Wow, that sounds uh, Italian or something. No, actually, Valsalva maneuver, if you're in the medical field, you know what it is. We're going to talk about it. And uh, it actually came from Dr. Antonio Valsalva in the 17th century. Yeah, that sounds Italian. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. As a matter of fact, uh, we've got a couple students here from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, All and right. they're getting their doctorate degree in physical therapy, and we're going to have them come in and have a little input on this. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. We're back. I'm Bob. I'm not trying to cut these guys off, but I'm going to introduce these two. They're both from the University of La Crosse, as you said. We got Tim and Brady. Do you want to give your last names too? Uh, sure. You <laughs> don't have to. Uh, <laughs> no, we're going to have to lose First names. All right. All right. There's a lot of pressure on these guys, never been on our video before, so we'll go ahead and start. Who started? Are you starting, Brady? Yep. Okay, Brady's going to start with the definition. Uh, definition of Valsalva maneuver is when you attempt to exhale against a closed airway, um, usually done by plugging your nose and closing your mouth, or by closing the glottis, which is the airway in your throat. Can you demonstrate? Yeah, the most functional way is if you think you're going to pick up something heavy and you hold your breath, so just like that. Do it. So, all right. So if I'm picking up something, I'm holding my breath while I'm doing it, which is not a good thing, right? You know, we're supposed to you're going breathe out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and go ahead. Yeah. And uh, yeah, expand on that. Yeah. Well, and some of the yeah. physiological effects are what it commonly will do is it will equalize the pressure in your eustachian tube. That's basically the tube that um, drains from your ear to your throat. So it's oftentimes used for. You know, aviation, like if your ears, if your ears popping or if your ears get plugged, you'll do that. Go from a times. different level? Yes. So, it, so you go from a pressure at 5,000 feet, level. you go, yeah. Yeah, it's it's exactly. Fine. Spot on. Even like in lacrosse, you go from, you know, down in the town and you go up to the bluff 500 feet higher, you can feel that. And then to do that, you equalize it by doing two techniques, one with a glottis. Yep. Closing the glottis or the nose. Yep. If you do it with the glottis, it's not going to do anything for your ear, right? Exactly, yeah. Right. If you, you have to equalize the pressure in your ears, you have to close your nose and then blow. Or right, then, like, what time you're going to do it? Going. All right, it's pretty simple. So you're just going to go. And what do you feel when that you happens? You feel the, uh, the pressure will come and you'll feel pressure in your ears, and then you'll kind of feel equalized. And hopefully, if you have any discomfort or any kind of pressure disturbances in your ears, that should decrease that. And so if you, if you this scoot, is a technique someone could use on a plane. Of course. Right. Well, it's oftentimes right. actually used on a plane. Okay. Yeah. Or scuba diving or snorkeling. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You go down 10, 20 feet, and I notice that you get that, it hurts. You know, the pressure exactly. from the water hurts, and you do this. You actually it, scuba dive? Yeah. You do? I have. Right. I don't. I, I, I snorkel, hard. but you do it snorkeling, too. It's just too. hard to believe. But. All right. Well, go ahead. Keep uh, going. Yeah, we got to stay on track. Now, um, well, the other thing is, do people chew gum? Does that help? It, it does, yeah, people can chew gum to help as well. It's kind of the same effect. So it's right. going to help with that eustachian tube. All right, and that's for flying too. Exactly. Sure. Okay. And then, do uh, you want to talk about the physiological effects as far as the heart rate and what it does and why you do not want to do this, particularly if you're lifting weights or if you have uh, compromised uh, heart rate or heart problems? Yeah, if you have heart problems, you generally want to avoid the valsalva maneuver while you're exercising. Um, what it does is it increases your heart rate and decreases your blood pressure and by decreasing your blood pressure you're not going to have as much blood going up to your brain so you can feel lightheaded oh, or busy sure. if you do that during exercise. Right, yeah. that's not a good time. I, exactly. mean, I mean when you're doing a bench press to suddenly have the, you know, right. have to come down upon you. So. And thinking the way I think, I, I, it's, I always have to kind of understand that when you do it, you go, the pressure in your chest increases and it puts pressure around the heart and the blood coming into the heart right. actually decreases. Sure. So that the heart rate sense. goes up to make up for that. Sure. And then the pressure goes down. And who was that the the guy who actually see Oh, they say they think Elvis might have um, done this and contributed right. to his death. So Really? Yeah. Some well, speculation. Oh, I mean when he's on the toilet? Oh, <laughs> I mean, was that it? Yeah, don't talk about the right. king now. Oh, right. okay. Well, so, sorry. That's true. So uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting you talk about the Valsalva maneuver. So, any other comments? From One of the best ways to prevent this is just to encourage um, your athletes, if your coaches or if your therapist, is to just have make sure your patients are breathing yeah. when they're doing strenuous exercise. 
Something simple, but sometimes it often gets overlooked. So if you're if you're doing repetitions, count out loud it forces you to breathe yeah, out and exactly. eliminate it. Now when you're let's say you're doing bench press, are you supposed to breathe out on the way down or when you're actually doing the the, the press up? Well I don't know what you do, Bob, but <laughs> <laughs> No, you typically on the the press up. That's a rhetorical question, Brad. Right? I mean it's a question where it's for the audience, oh, not I'm for sorry. me. I'm not asking for okay. me. Well we're we're so. I think that pretty much takes care of it. All right, I think, uh, by the way, the history of uh, physical therapy, I think we're in good hands. I mean, our, our legacy, right? Because these guys are smart guys. All right. They're, yeah. they're sharp. Yeah. Sharp as a pack. Well, that's good. <laughs>